get a liberal amount of laughs when this man dissects the ways of Washington and everybody in it. We may think it, but he says it. On Broadway, in clubs, and tonight on Straightforward. The politically incorrect Jackie Mason, my old friend, is here as our guest. No, you do a half hour. Nothing, and nobody escapes. You want to know how long he was on already. Just Jackie Mason. <laughs> nobody escapes this man's acerbic wit. He's been called an equal opportunity offender, and he is. Uh, if there's a way to find the truth at the heart of an issue, this is the guy who can do it. And he'll do it with wit and wisdom. He just closed yesterday Broadway's Golden Theater. Did you close the whole theater? I mean, forever? Or no, just I closed your show? Uh, no, I just closed myself okay. out of the business. Oh. <laughs> mm. But you have been on Broadway for how long, Jack? Eight years altogether. Eight years. Did they finally right. give you a award? I know you were whimpering about not getting one. I wasn't whimpering. I was crying, screaming, complaining, <laughs> threatening, but I wasn't they, whimpering. They did screw you the first few times, right? Uh, listen, let's be honest about it. They gave me a Tony Award for special achievement five years ago. Then they announced three years later that I shouldn't even be considered for a Tony because my show is not really a show. So if it's not a show, why did I get a Tony Award in the first place? Why are you working on Broadway if it's not a show? Right. I saw your show. It is a show. It's terrific. Are you going to travel it or what? Yes, I'm traveling with it because with my act, I'm afraid to stay in one place. <laughs> so I am going to. Oh, keep I wouldn't going. let that act travel alone either. I'd go. I'd stay with it at all times. <laughs> right. Uh, no, I did see your show. I know this will come as a shock. I actually paid for the ticket. I came to well, see you. Well, I yeah, pay, so. When you pay for something, I know it makes noise. <laughs> Jackie, what are you up to now? You, you're just tired, or what? I'm not to waking for nothing for guys like you. This is what. This is <laughs> no, what you've been on this, this network. You've success. been on CNBC, <laughs> and most of the time you work for nothing because you're a very wealthy guy. Right. Right. Meanwhile, you're making a living here, aren't you? So why should I, I, I be am. a partner for nothing? We should at least be partners. <laughs> Jackie, <laughs> how come you're mind? hanging around with Ralph Felder? Now I know how, I'm you're not, not hanging with him around. Today. I talk to him periodically, but I wouldn't say hanging around. Well, I never see you without him. I didn't see you with him today. Well, the truth really is that he has his own business. The man is an international. I wondered when he was going to get back to doing phenomenal famous lawyer. The only reason we're together so often is because we happen to be working together on BBC. Uh, we're both reporting on the O.J. Simpson trial for BBC. We're also uh, writing a book about the restaurants in America. Really? Deciding what's the best food. You guys place. went out to the O.J. trial together. Right. What did you learn from that? I learned from that that uh, everybody in the world thinks he's guilty and nobody in the world thinks he's going to get convicted. And this is a very, very weird commentary on the whole justice system of America when everybody takes it for granted that he's going to get away with it at the same time that nobody believes he's innocent. Almost nobody. Did you ever believe I, he I'm was talking, innocent? I, I, for me, it's inconceivable that he's innocent. I'm not saying he's guilty. All I'm saying is how it looks. I have no right to say the man is guilty just because he has blood all over the floors, the chairs, the furniture. <laughs> I have no right to say. I have no right to say that just because he promised every day to kill her that he necessarily killed her. <laughs> I have no right to say that just because it's on tape, I'm definitely going to kill you. That it's necessarily him. <laughs> I have no right to say any of these things. That the, that the DNA shows one chance out of 740 trillion that. It could be somebody else. <laughs> that it could be one guy in Honduras did it. But how, why was he in Brentwood that night? That's yeah. what I. Why was that guy from Honduras in Brentwood <laughs> that night? That's the problem I have with. That. I have no reason to say that because it's on his socks. That that it's the same socks or it's the same shorts, the same chair, the same table. The, the blood is all over the building, but it's not him. I, I, Johnny Cochran is a great lawyer. He's going to have you believing. Do you know who the real murderer is? Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and you know who God. did it with him? Marsha Clark. Oh, I'm God. telling you that he's going to have you believing this. Yeah, no, he is. He, he's, Shapiro, he's, to me, is the funniest character in this whole situation. Why? He looks like he forgot who's on trial a long time ago. Yeah, he, he does have that kind of vacant he's, look. He's like a Jewish John Gotti. He's involved with his shirts and his jackets. <laughs> yeah, and his he does. He just, he's waiting for a verdict on the tie, on the shirt. Yeah, Everybody else is like wondering that. about O.J. Simpson. He's looking, which way should I turn now? He is so busy with the schmatters. Yeah. <laughs> what about what's going on in Washington these days? Are you keeping up with the Clintons? I saw that uh, somebody said you thought Hillary was uh, Jewish. Is that true? I never thought she was Jewish. She, she, she's got a big mouth, but not that big. I, I would say. <laughs> you know, we're going to get letters on this. Now. I, I don't endorse I'm safe, it. I'm I safe. I'm, picking, the guy. I'm safe when I'm picking up the Jews. I never get a letter. You never get Jews a letter. only get mad if I say anything about blacks. Then the blacks love me because they know I'm kidding, and the Jews get mad. Yes. What right? That's exactly what happens. All my life, I kid the blacks just like I kid the Italians. I kid everybody I mean, all my life. As soon as I say a word about black, a Jew gets panicky. They're afraid, oh, somebody's going to climb in through the window. I better. I better better prove that I'm against it, what he just said. And the Jews become the worst anti-Semites. They start calling me a Jew, low-life son of a... I'm afraid to even tell you the names they call me. Really? But then the blacks love me. They love me because they could see that I'm kidding. It's not hard for them to tell this is a joke. <laughs> what about... Uh, everybody also says that even though 
Clinton hasn't done a very good job, he'll probably get reelected. I'm hearing a lot of that. Do you think I, that I'm hearing a lot of that too, but I think anybody who offers you opinions about who's going to win the next election is a total putz. Maybe you shouldn't use that word, but the man is an idiot. Because everybody knows throughout the election campaigns that t a year and a half or two years before an election, the gyrations of the polls go they in go every direction. Any conceivable direction, anything could happen on this site. Bush was 90 points ahead, two points all of a sudden, an hour later, two points behind. <laughs> Dole only a, only a month ago was 20 points ahead of Clinton, only a month ago. Now he's about five points behind Clinton in the last poll. And if this could happen in a month, how could you predict what the election is going to show? What, what do but you think of his attack on Hollywood? I think he's 100% right. The fact that it had a political purpose doesn't make it less true. If I save a child from drowning just because I wanted the publicity, does that mean I shouldn't have saved his life? Let's assume I did it for reasons that a, a psychiatrist would say was sick. Therefore, does that mean that you should leave the child there and let him drown? What he's saying happens to be 100% right. You won't want your child to hear that gangster rap music or whatever vicious music you hear from the violent maniacs who are making music today and the vicious attacks on decency that come from some of the pictures today. Whether it comes from Jews or Gentiles, blacks or whites, Time Warner or my sister-in-law, what's the difference? Who's doing it? Aren't you worried, though, that if, if, if you begin to censor Time Warner and gangster rap, that somebody's going to come along and say... Jackie Mason says the does black jokes and he does uh, Jewish jokes and he does you know but they're not no, really they're that, mean spirited they're going to hurt but we've got to censor Jackie you Mason. See, you see the difference between me and everybody else everybody could see there's love in my heart and it's an innocent comedy there's nobody's going to say watch out make sure your child doesn't hear Jackie Mason. No nobody, I, I agree with you. Nobody I mean I've told some children. Nobody will ever say that I did anything vicious or vulgar in my right. in my humor. I am the only comedian left in the country probably who never says a four letter word or a, a vulgar dirty word that's known as an obscenity. There's no obscenities at any time coming from my mouth about any subject. I'm not saying you shouldn't use an obscenity or go that far, but it's, it's a stupid idea to say what that doll said, something that therefore is, equates it with censorship. In what way does it have anything to do with censorship? Are you trying to say that everybody's entitled to their opinion except the politician? He's not telling you that if he's ordering you to stop on the penalty of the law. He's saying his opinion is that you shouldn't use you shouldn't do this. vulgar, disgusting things. Nobody, every time a rap singer sings a song advising you to kill cops in the streets or to kill Jews, kill Gentiles, kill women, kill this, kill that. You know what every mother and father says? I want to make sure the kid don't hear it. There should at least be a label. There should be a chance to make sure that my child don't hear it. So they're protecting their own children from it at the same time that they say they should be allowed to play it. If you should be allowed to play it because it's not so terrible, why are you shielding your children from it? Because you know it's disgusting. Argument? So your child should be protected but every other child shouldn't? You're I don't think it. labels do any good. I think kid sees a label, he buys it. I mean, right. I, I mean it's I mean, like putting up a thing on the screen that says, don't watch this program. It's dirty. Everybody, yeah. Every kid what knows if, where those shows Instead them. of killing cops, what if there were records that the music was put out to say, kill children? And especially uh, the child that your rage and your color. Would you say, sure, you should be allowed to say it? Mm. To protect your child, you shouldn't. They wouldn't say you should be allowed to say it. But if you say, kill a cop, they say, leave him alone. Mm -hmm. Is a cop's life worth any less than yours or your child? What about the argument? Whose life is worth nothing? Who am I talking to? What? I don't care. <laughs> Everybody left. You're talking to this camera. Let me, let me ask you. That. They say that, that Bob Dole says, you know, we should, we should stop the killing on the records, but then they vote uh, against gun control, and so they want to stop. I forget how they put it. This is a classic liberal argument that, that it's okay to have guns, I don't get it. But anyway, the, the point is that fraud, the, the, the biggest, record you can... The you greatest can fraud ever perpetrated by the liberals of this country, whether they're liberals or Jews or Gentiles or conservatives or anybody else, the biggest fraud, and these labels are idiotic. Common sense is the only thing that we should discuss. Every time you discuss an issue, every politician is so involved. Is this a conservative or a liberal? And they have to protect their flank and their issue and their party. And they don't, when you picked on Nixon as a crook, the Republicans didn't want to hear it. And until the very last day, they kept claiming he's an honest man. He wasn't an honest man. And they... And they you should have noticed it a year and a half earlier. But if the party says it, every time they're divided by parties when you call a guy a crook. Now you call Clinton a liar, and every Democrat is on his side, and every Republican is against it. Could it be that one party or the other all of a sudden can't see straight? Because the other party is involved? <laughs> if, if there was no parties involved, would people be so divided as to whether Clinton is a liar or not? The man is a liar. You've got to be an idiot not to see it. <laughs> okay, I've got to take a break. We have to take a break. Uh, 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 this is Mason Mania, and we'll be right back after these messages. It's a historical fact that Jews were always pacifists. They always abhorred violence. Jews were the first persecuted for that very reason. They were always believed in nonviolence. 
That's why there's no tough Jews any place in the world outside of Israel. You cannot find the tough Jew. Do you ever see a tough Jew in this country? I never saw four black people walking in the street and saying, Watch out, there's a Jew over there. <laughs> You ever see anybody afraid to walk into a Jewish neighborhood because he might get killed by an accountant? <laughs> I'll tell you something. I did laugh that night. I mean, I, you, you are really one funny guy. <laughs> well, thank God. It's about uh, time you noticed it. Yeah, no, I noticed it. I, I have good. noticed it. It's, uh, you Let are me get back guy. to this gun control Yeah, story. okay. I, wait, I want to clear this up so people yeah. don't think I'm stupid. The liberals say that that uh, the Republicans want to stop the CDs and the and the music out being put out because they want to stop talking about killing, but they want to endorse gun control, uh, they, not endorse gun control, gun control, so they, don't, they want to let real killing go on. In the streets. Now, the where biggest, are you on gun control? The biggest fraud ever perpetrated in our society by, by supposed scholars and students of great crime and criminologists and technicians and legality, they're all frauds in their heart because they all know one thing, that gun control has never deteriorated, uh, affected crime in this country. It's never diminished crime. It never fought crime. It never did anything about crime. Crime has gone up every year with all the laws passed of gun control in different cities and states throughout this country. Washington, D.C. has a very high number of gun control uh, laws. Uh, uh, New York City has a solid of a law that puts you in jail for a year just for holding a gun in the street. So, and why does the, the, the amount of crime in New York gone up 9,000% in the last 25 years? This is such a preposterous, idiotic fraud. If I said to you that I pass a law that if you walk around with this cup, somebody's going to put you in jail, and all of a sudden, 10 minutes later, everybody in the street is walking around with a cup like this, there's something wrong with the law. There's something wrong with the idea. We better find another way to do it. The whole idea that because an innocent person is carrying a gun or has a gun, that therefore mobs of innocent people are going to start killing each other is such an idiotic nonsense. Mm. Every innocent person has a car. He could run you over in a second and keep flying with the car. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a lot easier to kill you with a car than with a gun because you can't find the guy. Where is he? He's now in Philadelphia. He was here a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> if a guy wants to kill you, he could kill you with a knife. He can't see him coming. You sing hello, hello waving in the back, ping in the heart, it's over. What are you going to do? So why don't you take out a knife from every kitchen in America? The whole idea that because you have a, a weapon to kill people with, the innocent person to become a murderer is such idiotic nonsense. The only thing these laws have done is empower the murderers to keep killing innocent people because they know they got nothing to lose. Okay, so, I guess I know where you stand. Let me go back to Washington. You're a single guy. Janet Reno is single. Would you ever, like, date Janet Reno, do you think? Positively. I would, would, love, to, I would love to marry her by Thursday. She's you would. very She's appealing gorgeous. to me. I love tall people out of shape. I love people. Like that. <laughs> tall, uh, out of shape people? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because the beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. What's considered a beautiful shape to some people is not necessarily true to me. To me, she's a stunning woman. I would marry her in a second. I don't hear from her. <laughs> she never I'm writes. Not, she don't write. She don't call. I'm dying to hear from her. <laughs> Tell me what's going to happen. I booked the hall twice already. She don't you did. She doesn't show up. <laughs> huh? No. Do you think they ought to put her in charge of Bosnia? She did a job down in Waco. Oh, I think she could do a job of wiping out everybody in the world in a second and a half. <laughs> I think in the name of decency and brotherhood, she could kill anybody in the street without a whimper. Hey. That, that Waco thing was the biggest fraud of all time, and, and it's the lowest lying thing that ever happened. And the fact that they're avoiding an investigation of it is the biggest mockery of justice I ever heard. And it also goes back to party systems. If you're a Democrat, you shouldn't even investigate it. This is such idiotic nonsense that parties become more important than decency in this country. It's if not enough more offensive than that. What is this? This is, this is my final word. The biggest. Screw you and your bento. See, this is uh, well written. Did you write this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> she never wrote. I never even you thought of this. It Wait. sounds like me. It's not me. It's my brother-in-law. Oh, come on now. <laughs> now, Jackie, how much do you make every time one of these little things? The biggest. Well, come you never told me how much you make every time you. Why? I want to know how much you make. I want to know how much you. I want to know if I can put it. How? All right, let me put it this Who's way. You're what not if my I don't want? You're not in total revenue. You're not my accountant. How much? I never. You never sent me a check for anything. Stupid. The biggest. How much would it cost you to come over to my house and do this in person to some of my neighbors and people like? <laughs> <laughs> it would cost more to come live, right? right. 
But that's a nice little gadget. Do you it certainly is. Sell it, it's, it solves a fortune. It also makes enemies all over the world for anybody. It's good. If you don't like somebody, and you're instead of calling them names, which is a little embarrassing, you just turn it on, and the guy knows what you think of him. I think we ought to send it over yeah. to the UN. <laughs> that's Liven that place up a little bit. You know? <laughs> this you Bosnia think? story has got to be the dumbest thing. What the What's hell was... What's going on? Could you don't tell me what the purpose of the United Nations is. If, if, if three people who have four guns in a country called, uh, called uh, Bosnia or the Serbs have to about four guns and a half a tank and three people without a jacket and they have to kill you with a stick. These two, this group could stop a whole armada, the whole NATO organization, the whole United Nations organization from even functioning. And they could make a prison. This is like a, a Peter Sellers picture. Peter <laughs> Sellers in his worst day wouldn't have had the nerve to create a story where the whole world, the power that was ready to stop Russia and China with atomic energy and nuclear power unheard of in this world. That's how powerful they were. Seven people with schmatas in a bed show up and say, I'm going to put you all in prison. And they do. They put up, they put 320 the, of those guys in prison. The most well, they all had white helmets on, for one time. Or what blue was the United Nations other? organized for if they're not supposed to keep peace any place? If you can't keep peace in a broken down country like this, where are you going to keep peace? At a supermarket? <laughs> <laughs> what is their no, purpose? It's, it's, their it's purpose sad. is to come here and wear fancy schmatters and park wherever they want to wipe out the whole neighborhood in New York. All they do is collect parking tickets and they don't even eat in the restaurants. They come with their own food. They don't bring us any business. They don't buy a shirt or a tie because That's they true. have these captains from foreign countries. So they cost us a fortune and so have no purpose. That is true. The this United is worse Nations than a brother. This is worse than having a brother-in-law in your house who keeps <laughs> eating for nothing and does nothing for a living. <laughs> Would you ever be a delegate to the UN? I got 30 seconds. I'd love to be a delegate to the UN so I could tell them all what I think of them. I would tell them off, abuse their heads off, and I'll take them all prisoner in five minutes because if Bosnia <laughs> could take them prisoner, if I come with a gun, I'll have the whole UN held hostage. <laughs> okay, we'll be back. More The World According to Jackie Mason right after these messages. Until he changes the hair. <laughs> ja Jackie was on. We were on with Reverend Al Sharpton right, on right, CNBC. Right. How'd that go? It went great. You know, he has an image of a rabble rouser, a, a man who attacks violently every issue and he's uncontrollable right. in some way. But when you sit with him on television, you, no, you can't help guy. loving this man. No, he's a, he's a reasonable guy. Anything he ever said about the Jews that was supposed to be hate was all of a sudden became love. He, he, he wanted to marry me, kiss me. I almost took my clothes off. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I never saw such a sweet man in my life. Absolutely. Absolutely lovable guy. It's the guy. hair, though. I, I, lovable I, I, guy, and he's exceptionally bright. This he is man a bright is a guy, very yeah. articulate, bright guy. He is a bright guy. Hates it when you bring up how rich he is, sort of like Jesse Jackson hates it when you bring up how rich he is. But He doesn't hate it. He denies it. He claims to me that he hasn't got a quarter of any place. He, maybe he knows I can't find it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> figures I won't start looking, but so he says to me, there's, we, there's you, no you, you were talking about Nixon and Clinton. What's the difference between Nixon and Clinton? Well, Nixon lied when he had to lie. Clinton lies for pleasure. Clinton lies, he's, he's, Clinton lies as a basic natural liar, just like a person who's a sociopath who just can't help lying. And this is not personal, because I started off liking him. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. It's like sometimes it's hard to believe that your own uh, sister is a hooker. Uh, you, you start off liking a person, you want to believe the best, and all of a sudden I started to notice, this is a weird, strange, sick type of a person. You think of politicians as liars, but they lie when they're in trouble, or to prove a point, or to win an election. This guy lies by nature. He enjoys it. If he could think of the truth, he won't tell it to you. But if See, the American people had to vote for Nixon or Clinton today, who would win? I really don't know. They were Be both, close. They were both, but you see, Nixon at least had the decency to twitch a little when he lied. He twitched <laughs> because he had a conscience about lying. It was the torment and the conflict in his sure. conscience that made him sweat. Sweat. He sweat. Sweat. Yeah. sweat a lot. This man doesn't sweat. He enjoys lying. He tells you a lie. You don't like it. I got another one. You don't like this one. He gives you multiple choice. <laughs> multiple choice. They fly from his mouth like it's so comfortable doing it as if to say, look, you're such a putz. You'll buy anything I tell you. It's like, who in the world would be would have the goal to tell a whole country I smoked but I didn't inhale? Would you put a pastrami sandwich in your mouth if you didn't want to swallow it? <laughs> Could you picture a guy walking around with a pastrami sandwich, walking around with a pastrami? <laughs> I mean, it's become so preposterous. How many lies he told about Vietnam? No, it's inconceivable that a person could tell that many lies about one subject. You know how many... How many books you have to read to think of that many lies? <laughs> First he said they never called me. Okay, they called me, I wasn't home. Then he said, I was home, I forgot where I lived. Then he said, they forgot where they were, I forgot I'm a citizen, I forgot which... Co then he settled for a whole new thing that they called him at the wrong time. It was the wrong time, you know why? It was in the middle of a war. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't afraid of guns, not guns, bullets. It's the whole thing is... A, I, this last joke I do in my act that yeah. it tears the house down because it's so true of this man that with such a look of conviction and sincerity, look what he did to the Haitians, to swear to the Haitians. 
you know, if some of these lies are frivolous lies, you could say it's not important, he was trying to get a job. To lie to the Haitians, do you think one Jew in America would tolerate him, or one Estonian, one Latvian, one anybody from any country to would exempt him or excuse him for what he did to the Haitians, when he called Bush literally inhuman for not allowing the Haitians in this country? And he said, as soon as I become president, I'll be allowed immediately, and the Haitians believed him. As soon as he got elected, they started building boats. Remember what he said? He said, where are you going? <laughs> he said, what's the country? That's he said, there's true. so many countries. Is this the only one? What are you, what's the hurry? <laughs> what I'm about Kissinger? You, you, you do Kissinger in your I head. always do impressions of him in my act for 20 years. Yeah? I happen to love Kissinger. Yeah, I, I, he's, he's a, a good friend of mine. He's, a, he's been on the show. He's a good yeah. guy. Well, then I'm yeah. glad I said the right thing. Why yeah. should I insult yeah. the person that you depend on? What do you think? Of, what's the essence of him, though? What's the, the, essence of, the essence of him is that he's brilliantly profound in, in, in being able to predict almost everything in international affairs. He has a better idea of what's happening and why and how. He is, I put him on the same level as a man of a, that I'm crazy about, Leslie Gelb from the New York Times. Mm -hmm. Les Gelb is not as popular as Kissinger, but he's just as brilliant about it. He predicted, together with Kissinger, everything that's happening in Bosnia right now. Yeah. Everything that's going on there. And just like, uh, uh, what's the Yentas name, the uh, Prime Minister of England, the ex Prime Minister? The Margaret lady? Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher. She said the same thing that I'm saying now. She says, How could you call it the United Nations if the only purpose of it is to maintain peace? And as soon as a war breaks out between four people, it's none of your business? Mm -hmm. If there was oil there, we'd be there in a second. Human beings don't count us. If they put up a gas station in Bosnia, we'd be there in five minutes. <laughs> well, this has always been the argument in Tibet. You know, the Chinese took right. over Tibet. They, they savaged Tibet, but there's no oil in Tibet, so we haven't been That's too right. interested in Tibet. It's a phony story completely. If the oil is supposed to be to save people, and people are supposed to count more than oil, aren't they? What is the oil for? For elephants, for cockroaches? It's supposed to be to save people. You save oil, but you wouldn't save a person. Now the oil will be all over the world, but where's, where's the oil going to go? To who? For what purpose? To wash up floors without people? It's a whole idiotic nonsense. How do you get along with Jesse Jackson? What do you think the essence of Jesse is? Jesse Jackson, I think, is a great, great uh, player in, in the political arena. He's a brilliant tactician. He's a great talker. He's a great promoter. If you ask me what he accomplished, I would say very little. All I know is that if there's a disaster, he's there in a second. Yeah, I've Obama, never seen a guy get to a... A bar mitzvah, he got no time. Ah. You have to have a disaster for him to show up. He yeah. waits and sits in his house. What are they burning down now so I could show up? In a yeah, he is great at the photo op, boy. He never misses I one. never saw a better politician for never pictures. Never misses him. He has a um, He must have newspapers all over his house with, with directions <laughs> to every tragedy in the world. As soon as anybody is at a hospital, hello, I'm a partner. He don't have to know you. <laughs> all he knows is there a camera, hello. Are you working on a new show? Are you going to go out with a new show? Oh, I mean, sure. I know you change your show once about it. First, I, I change the show every year and a half or two, depending on how long the show lasts. I, they'll go out on the road. Now I'm going out to England. I'm going to play for the Queen of England. For her, I'm not too Jewish. If I'm Let in me Brooklyn, ask you a question. When you Jewish. play for the... How do you speak when you talk to the Queen? Just like I'm talking now. I oh, come on. You but the Queen, the Queen lately is beginning to talk like me. Last time I did a show, she said, okay, he wasn't that good, he was pretty good. Every time I do a show, she winds up doing me. You do a voice in your act that is very cultured. What is that voice? You know when you do the, uh, what, what are you talking about? Well, I'm doing Kissinger, you mean? No, you're doing a wasp, or you're doing a wasp voice, or somebody's voice, I don't know. Your I whole accent, what Well, I do, an impression, I do an impression of people with the entering machines, I think that's yeah, what Yeah, that's it, about. that's it. People have entering machines, I say, and somehow they always want to be sound cultured and cultivated on the entering machine. They get very, very uh, self-conscious about how perfect they sound on the entering machine. I say, well, you meet a Jew in the street, he talks like me. You ever hear him on the entering machine? Hey, you are calling to him. Of Lily and Flagel, title town. <laughs> we are currently not at home. <laughs> but if you leave your name and your number and the time that you call, <laughs> and everybody's walking on, who is that schmuck? I don't recognize him. <laughs> it is true. We talk to the machine differently. Why is that? <laughs> because people suddenly get self conscious about what they sound like, it and they're suddenly true. aware of their own accent. That is true. <laughs> Everybody I know talks to the machine differently. Right. It's not conversation. The whole thing is an ego trip, this whole entry machine business. Yeah? 
<laughs> you you did a sitcom for a while. Would you ever go back to it, or do you? Positively, not. Anybody offers me a sitcom, I'll tell them right now to drop dead immediately. Why? Because I would put them in a sanitarium so they shouldn't get to me too soon. Because really? I don't want to hear the price they're offering me. Because I don't want to lose that kind of money. <laughs> so I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> because right away I'm tempted to go back. Who wants to be in a prison camp from six o'clock in the morning to six o'clock at night, and then at the rest of the night you're doing rewrites, and after the rewrites are over, you get up six o'clock in the morning to rehearse it again, and you're talking to a wall like a like you. If somebody offered you a job, you know what this job is? You see this line. You know how many times? 3,000 times from Monday to Friday. You keep saying it over and over to a wall, to a floor, to a toilet. You're talking to yourself for a week. How much does it pay? Would you care? Who wants no. to go there? But if you tell them it's on television, oh, I'm happy. It's true. Actors will do sacrifice themselves in any conceivable way as long as they know their face will be on the screen. You could tell an actor, an elephant is going to bite your nose off. Is it, do I have a long shot? <laughs> <laughs> it is true. Anything to get on camera, right? <laughs> they have no, no, nothing this time's an actor. Although I've hired a lot of I actors, saw, uh, and, I, and then you hire them, finally. You know, they give you the, and you finally give the guy a chance. And after, on his second show, you ask him to do something, and he'll say, I'm not sure this is good for my career. You know, oh, so yeah, they turn yeah. overnight. Oh, yeah, they turn them overnight in terms of complexes about imagery. Yeah. But in terms of what they have to suffer from to, to get that image, they'll yeah. suffer in any way. You could put them in a pile of dirt and tell them to lay their 300 degree temperature, you'll come out crippled for life. Is it a long shot? <laughs> That's all they want to know. <laughs> all right, Jackie, thanks for coming. God bless you. Okay. I'm Enjoy so it. glad you're making now, a living with be this nice kind to, of talent. Uh, yes, be, be nice to the queen. I'll try my Okay, best. on behalf of America. I'll mention your name, and I'm sure I'll get uh, okay. the same treatment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jackie Mason. We'll have...